and welcome to my channel. Hey, this is Juanita. Today I'm going to be working in this whole entire shaded area here. And I'm going to be adding a lot of plants. And as you can see, I'm surrounded with plants. So I'm going to be creating this very lush and very colorful area so that it coordinates with the plants right across the way from me. So I'm going to explain the plants that I'm going to be adding and the names of them. And then I'm going to also uh, leave this container for the very end. So it'll be kind of a surprise for you as to what I put in there. So I'm going to start off with the fern over there. And you probably can barely see it because it's underneath the butterfly tree. Now I call this area more my woodland shaded area because I have a butterfly tree right above me. And that tends to really shade this area quite a bit. Uh, every now and then in a good hot sunny day, then you might get some filtered sun in here. But otherwise it stays pretty shaded. So I'm going to start with that uh, fern over here. It kind of looks like a maiden hair fern. I'm not sure of the type. I've had it for quite a few years. But I had it in front of my Aztec Western rhododendron up front. And so I dug it up earlier just so that I could place it somewhere else because it was just getting overgrown in that area. So I've got a good spot behind this uh, butterfly tree. I've got the room for it. It's going to be happy. It looks happy already. And I barely even have it in a container right now. So once I get in the ground, it's even going to do even that much better. Then in this container, I am going to be taking out the hardy fuchsia that's been in here for the last few years. I don't know the name of it. I'll try to put it down here. But if I don't, then it's because I just simply don't know what type it is. It's got like pink, uh, pink to purple flowers on it. And it's hardy and it uh, blooms all summer long. So I want to get it before it actually starts to bloom. So I'm going to pull it out, put it in there. And in its place, I'm going to add a Golden Gate hardy fuchsia that gets about 30 to 35 tall and wide. The stems on this is also red. And the whole idea of doing all this is so that all the colors coordinate and it brings a lot of color to this area, whether they are in bloom or whether they're just a foliage filled with color. But because this is going to get fairly big, I'm going to tack it as far back as I possibly can. And then of course it's going to get pretty tall. And then I'm going to add a couple of lamiums because these are going to spread out. They have pink flowers and that's going to cascade over, which is going to really be nice with that variegated color uh, around it. So I'm going to add a couple of them on either side with a Forever Red Hookera right in front because this will get about 36 inches in diameter. And so that's just going to add really nice in front of all this. And it also blooms these little white flowers. So it's going to add some white to the variegation here. Then in front of it, I'm going to add three more Forever Red Hookeras here. And then beside those, I'm going to add some Lysomechia Persian Chocolate. And I spoke about this on my previous video. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here for you. But uh, this has a variegated leaf that's kind of like a, a burgundy red with, with pinks and a little bit of white and chartreuse type leaves. And then the bottoms of them, they're red in color. So it's going to go really nicely with every other color, all the reds that are right here. They're non-invasive. All these plants here, they all are pretty hardy. Um, and they all do really great. And they are all primarily shaded plants. They could really closely get into the part shade, but primarily they're shaded plants. Then right where I'm sitting at, I'm going to add a marmalade hookera. The leaves again are red and chartreuse, which adds to the hostas that are around me and that's going to go right there. Then I'm going to add a few more lamians down as ground cover because I just like it as ground color. Col <laughs> I just like it for a ground cover because they're just beautiful. And when they're in shade, uh, the, the more shade they get, the closer to ground cover that they are and they don't grow very tall. So I like lamium more in the shade than I do in 
and part to full sun. But uh, I like it for the versatility that it has. Then this is a um, Liberta granfolia, and it's a um, white iris. It's a relative to the New Zealand irises. And this will get about three feet tall. And I'm going to place this one right behind right behind the jack frost over there because the jack frost has a variegated leaf and the white flowers are just going to bounce right off of that really beautifully. Especially because I'm going to be adding three Azabel uh, amethyst, one right behind me, one right here, which will crown this. And then I have another one over here and they get about 20 inches tall. So it's going to be uh, a good area here. Plus it's getting enough light that I think they're going to be just perfectly fine for blooming. Uh, let's see. Then I have a spot on uh, long wart here. And the reason why I'm putting a long wart here is because it's got variegated leaves and it just makes it a nice balance between that variegated leaf and the jack frost variegated leaves over there. So they kind of just balance everything out. And then in front of this and the amethyst over there, I'm going to be adding a new hosta and it's just the baby. I mean it's just barely peeking out and so I don't know how big it's going to get this season but I'll do a follow-up video on all this as things progress and they bloom. This is actually called a first blush hosta. So the leaves are similar to this, only it's going to be red to purple in color, and that's going to be beautiful. And um, I, tried, I tried to find another one because they're so unique, but it uh, seems like everybody's selling out of these, so I was very lucky to have uh, ordered this in time. And I ordered that off of Eaton Brothers, and I'll put the link down there. I'm, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, and really not affiliated with them, but I think they're a great place to go. So at least they've done well as far as uh, getting my flowers to me <laughs> in good time. So yeah, so let's see. I think that's about all I'm going to do. So if you have any questions on this, Leave them on the comments below, which is right below the description area. There's a little arrow. Just click on that and you can leave a comment and, uh, or any questions that you might have and I'll get them on a Q&A down the road. I really enjoy them and if anything, you guys inspire me to continue doing what I'm doing. So thank you for that. Uh, also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification button so you catch me on all my videos. And uh, again, you will see what's in this container at the very end. Okay, hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to get started.
gonna do, because I'm trying to do some type of sustainable wicking uh, moisture for my plants, uh, just so that if I forget to water it, it's got some moisture in it, into the soil. But to protect this wood, even though it's already probably pre-treated because it was a whiskey barrel, I'm gonna add plastic underneath it. And the reason why I'm using clear is just so that you can't see it. And then I'm gonna add dirt around it just so that it doesn't rust and corrode this part here. As far as this part, I'm not gonna worry about it. Maybe down the road I'll, you know, lather up some uh, kind of wood protector for the outside. But for the most part, it gets pretty protected down here anyway. I did have one uh, at another time. Took a few years, but it finally corroded and that's why I replaced it with that plastic one. But that plastic one just didn't quite fit into this whole woodland uh, kind of foresty area. So I'm gonna use this instead. Now, I didn't paint the stand. It was painted white at one time. It's gotten rusty over the time. But I'm gonna leave it like that because it just kind of adds to that rustic environment here. Rather than making everything new, I wanna keep it kind of rustic. So that's why I'm not gonna paint that. So if you notice that it wasn't perfect, well, it's, that's the reason why. So anyway, so I'm gonna put the plastic underneath this, then throw dirt on it. And then I'm going to be adding these containers in it. I have, um, I think five of them are gonna fit in here perfectly. Then I'm gonna add rock to it. And then I'm gonna put one layer of like cotton, uh, like an old towel or something because it'll create a wicking type moisture. So here's what it looks like. I added seven of these plastic containers and the plastic is underneath this. So it's gonna hold up some water and this will have water. I'll uh, put a hole here so that it gives it a drainage hole. But for now, it's gonna fill this up with rocks up to the level of this. Okay, so now that you saw how I put the rocks in here, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole on, on this side as well as on that side, and I'm gonna add a pipe in an angle so that if there's, when the water level gets up to a certain level, this will be a draining tube. I had a soaker hose over in that side that I haven't used in a long time, and it fits perfectly in this hose. I can later on add an attachment to this and then uh, do something different. But for now, I'm gonna use it with my soaker hose and I'm gonna just throw that soaker hose in it. I have it entwined over here and that's gonna add as a soaker hose anytime that this water level gets up high. And then I don't have to worry about whether this is gonna saturate this dirt or not. It'll just give it the appropriate moisture that it needs. So I'm going to drill a hole on this side and that side to fit this in there. Oh my gosh, couldn't get better. Okay, and then I'll just add some sealant to this side. But anytime water gets above this hole right here, it's gonna drain out. So that's gonna take care of that side. Now I have both hoses, <laughs> I'm really hot now. So as you can see, each pipe is kind of angled slightly downward. And uh, in the inside, you can just barely see where the pipe comes out. So anytime that water level comes up that far, it'll drain out. Again, I put my soaker hose in that hose and it doesn't really matter if it soaks this area up. I could clamp it down right here, but it doesn't really matter because this is just gonna soak into the ground over here where all my other plants are gonna go.
So now I have my terry cloth, but what I'm going to do so that this doesn't get all muddy, the pipe doesn't get all muddy over time, once this gets saturated with dirt, I have two things here. One is a cheesecloth, which is kind of like a cotton. And then I have this mesh uh, vegetable bag. This vegetable bag has some plastic in it. So I'm gonna use this over this as added filtration. So I'm just gonna cut it. And these things are cheap. You can get like, I don't know, uh, six or seven of them for like 12 bucks and I'm in Amazon. So I'm just gonna cut the corners because I'm gonna put that little tip inside that pipe. And then the duct tape probably isn't gonna hold really great, but I'm gonna just add it around the top of it. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the little mesh in here and then I kind of duct tape it on top and see that little tip right there? I'm just sticking it right into that hose with my finger. Now, if you don't have a small finger like me, you can probably use a little stick or something. And then I'm just adding some rocks on top of it and I'm not covering my hole. So that's gonna add for protection. Same thing I did over there. This really should have been a video of its own, but I kinda just thought of it on a whim and thought, why not do it? I, I have to put the dirt in here, so I better do it before I do that. So this wasn't part of the plan, but it's the plan, so bear with me, and this is just gonna be a longer video. So again, I've got my hole right there. Oh, got my, my hole right there. And I'm just adding the duct tape just to uh, keep it from the dirt going in there. Okay. Then I'm just going to add some rocks around it to kind of secure it a little bit. Okay. So now that that's done, I'm going to add my terry cloth over it. Or my towel, an old towel. I'm just going to cut off the excess here. There. Now I'm just going to throw the terry cloth and this is going to add as a wicking material. And I'm just gonna put this also against the hole. This way it adds for an additional uh, screening. And I will add some duct tape to that. And my hole's right there. So, not, oops. And this is just to keep it in place while I put the dirt in, so. Okay. Now I'm gonna add my dirt and put my plants and be done with this project. Okay, for the rest of this uh, video, I'm gonna put some music on and finish planting what I need to plant.
so that's going to do it for me. I tell you, I have been dealing with bright sun, rain, <laughs> high winds throughout this whole project, but I am completely done now, and I am extremely happy with the end result. I added three different things that were not in the equation of uh, putting in here, and they were like an afterthought of doing it. I, I it was not pre-planned, so if you have any questions on that, leave it on the comments below. It's below the description area, but it, I'm glad that I did it, because uh, I did a lot of research on self-sustaining water features for uh, self-watering containers, and in my head, in my concept of thinking, uh, I liked a lot of what they had to say, only I just did it a little different. So I didn't fill it up with water because there's no need to fill it up with water. It's primarily there so that if I get a big rainfall or if there's too much water in there, that it'll actually drain out and self-water my other plants. But I'm really, really happy. And then I, it turned out that I had two uh, first blush hostas. So I planted them both over here and uh, I went to go move one and I couldn't believe how quickly it got comfortable in this area. And it's already growing in just the few hours. That, <laughs> either that or it's my imagination. But whatever the case is, I'm excited because they might just come out for the rest of the season and then I'll give you a follow up on that. And I mentioned most of the plants that I planted. I didn't uh, waver on those. Those are still the same other than these ones that I added that I told you I was going to surprise you with. And, uh, but yeah, the rest of it is what, what I mentioned at the very beginning. So if you can't remember that, just start over. <laughs> and there's a plane, so I'm going to wait for that. I live right next to FedEx Airport and the major Portland Airport, and so I get planes across here all the time. But anyway, um, I just thought that that whiskey barrel made a lot more sense than having that plastic container, and I think you would agree, and it just turned out beautiful. I really admire this spot now. So I'm going to turn the camera around, give you a walkthrough, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It's right below the description area. And most importantly, get out, get out, get active. Yeah, get active, you guys. You don't have to do what I'm doing. My whole focus is to inspire you to just even take on one project. One project alone would make a difference in your life because you would get out and up from your chair or your bed or whatever situation you're in and, and take Mother Earth into your, just in your breathing and you're taking it all in. So yeah, make sure you get up, get out, and get active. You have nothing else. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to turn the camera around. My camera's kind of swaying right now because of the winds. So uh, I'm going to turn you around, give you a walkthrough. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Mm, love you. I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye. So this is what it looks like in the after. It's so much prettier, so much fuller. It's just overall beautiful. And I can't be more happier, and I think you would agree. Um, where it's staked up over here, as it turned out, I had two first blush hostas, so I put one in front of the other. So it'll fill that whole spot up. Then I switched my Azabel Amethyst over here. I was originally going to put my um, Liberta Granfolia there, but I switched them around and put it over here instead because the white flowers on it will really pop off the whites in my Jack Frost over here. And then on my container over here, I added a Whirlwind Hosta. And along with that, because all of these plants in it, they're pretty equal when it comes to watering. Planted some carpet bangalow weed. Uh, it's a ground cover and it's got some rosy colored uh, foliage on it. So it just adds to all the other pinks that are going to come out in there. And then in front of it, I, I added some Lithodoria. And the only other thing that I want to mention, my fuchsia that I had in the red round pot, 
I placed it in that a water bucket and it did go into shock a little bit, but it's, it looks like it's popping right back up. So I'm happy about that. So this is the after from the cherry tree to the butterfly tree.